Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 113, and what we're going to do today is begin our discussion of current electricity. Now, we've already discussed static electricity in the last unit, and static electricity was the buildup of charges caused by friction or conduction or induction, where all the charges were stored on an object. Now, current electricity gives the electrons a push, and the electrons will flow through conductors and form what we call a circuit. Now current is moving charges. So we're going to have the flow of electrons through whatever we have set up. It could be a light bulb, it could be just a resistor, or it could be something more complex like a toaster oven or a coffee pot or something like that. But to begin our discussion we need to discuss why current can exist in the first place. And there are conditions that must be met in order for this to occur. There are three conditions that need to be met. The current needs a place to move, it needs to have a path for the electrons to travel, and it needs a reason for the electrons to travel within the circuit. Now for the first one, we need a complete path and we call that complete path a circuit. The abbreviation for circuit is CKT. And what we need is a closed loop. So if you have just a single wire, that wire needs to connect the two ends to itself and that will allow the electrons to flow in a complete circular path in that case. Now of course a single wire just looped together is not going to create a, a circuit. In fact that's just one piece of the puzzle. So the first thing though is we have an open circuit which is where there's a break in the circuit and we have a closed circuit. Now the term circuit actually means a closed path for the electrons to travel. So the fact that we say a closed circuit is really redundant. An open circuit is where there's a switch open or maybe a break in the circuit itself and current cannot flow. So the electrons are just waiting around to start to move. In the case of a capacitor, which was back to the static electricity where we had uh, parallel plates, they could be waiting for enough charge to build up so then they can move. When we had electricity discharging through a Van de Graaff generator, for example, that discharge was the current flowing. It was brief, but it was current flowing. The buildup of the charges was the static electricity component, and then the current was when it discharged. Now, the second thing we need is a path for the, the electrons to travel. And typically, we have that path as a metal conductor. In chemistry, you learned about the C of electron model and how in metals, all the valence electrons are held weakly by the atom itself. Metals have weak holes on their valence electrons, and typically in the periodic table, they're lift, listed in the left. Now, when that is the case, the electrons are free to move quite readily. So the mobility of the charges is what we call the conductivity of the material and metals have high conductivity. So because the metal is able to conduct electricity quite readily, we use metals in our circuits in order for us to have um, easy current flow. Now, different metals will have different levels of conductivity. We typically use wire um, that is made of copper in our electrical lines in our house because it's abundant and it's fairly inexpensive. Now the price of copper has continually increased, so it's not as uh, cheap as it once was, but it's cheaper than some of the alternatives. And it provides good conductivity to allow electricity to flow in your house. Now the final thing that needs to be uh, present in order to have a, a current to flow is the electrons need a reason to move. Electrons on their own will just sit there. Their electrons in a wire aren't going to move um, without a push. Now the push is typically given by a battery or a power supply or a wall outlet and that provides a potential difference. Now the potential difference is also known as the voltage. So if we have a voltage difference between one end of the terminal and the other, typically positive and negative, the electrons are going to flow. So the electrons will be pushed away from the positive terminal, I'm sorry, pushed away from the negative terminal and move towards the positive terminal. And that's because of the um, attraction of unlike charges. They're repelled by like charges, that's why they're pushed away from the negative terminal and they're attracted to the positive terminal. 
when we have a circuit diagram to denote the presence of a power supply, which will effectively give us a reason for the electrons to move, we use a series of alternating long and short lines. They're parallel lines, and they're long, short, long, and short. Now, the short line represents the negative terminal of the battery, and the long line represents the positive terminal of the battery. When we have that situation, you can remember the negative versus the positive because the negative is small, so it looks like a negative sign. And the positive terminal is long, so you could break it in half and make a plus sign out of it. So in order for current to flow in the first place, we need three things. We need to have a complete path, which we call a circuit. We need to have a conductor, which is typically a metal. Um, so we need to have a wire. And then we have, need to have a reason for the electrons to flow themselves, and that is the push in the circuit, which is typically provided by a battery, a power supply, or the wall outlet. In each case, all three of these conditions must be present for current to flow. If any of these are not present, the electrons won't flow, and you won't have a circuit in the first place. So that concludes our discussion today for conditions for current to exist in the first place. What I'm going to do is discuss this a little more detail with the whiteboard. Thank you. Now, we just finished our discussion of static electricity last chapter. So static was stationary as opposed to current, which is moving. And current electricity is the current we think of like in a river or a stream. Now, in order for current to exist, three things have, have to be present. And we need to have a complete path. Which means that if we're connecting a battery, which may look like this, this is going to be our symbol for a battery, we need to have a complete path for the current to flow. If there's a break in the path, there'll be no opportunity for the current to flow because there's a gap in the circuit. Now, in some cases, there will be a gap that will be a capacitor, and it can look like this. This will be the symbol for a capacitor, just like the parallel plate capacitors we talked about in our last chapter. And in this case, what would happen is all the electrons would store on one side and eventually jump across when the charge became too large. But for right now, we need to have a complete circuit. Now, in this case, since there's no components, if we connect one end of the battery to the other end with a piece of wire, we're going to create a short circuit. And because the resistance is so low, that could actually cause um, the battery to heat up and, and ultimately it could um, melt. So that's a reason why it's dangerous to put um, batteries in your pockets with loose change. The loose change, especially on a 9-volt battery where the terminals are next to each other, could actually touch both ends of the 9-volt. And if you think of a 9-volt battery, it's got the two terminals on the top. If a coin were to touch both ends and complete the circuit, that could actually cause this to short circuit and melt in your pocket and actually burn you with the um, battery acid that's in the battery itself when it explodes. So it's uh, important to not have batteries in your pocket and especially batteries with loose change as well. So the first thing you need to have is a complete path getting back to our condition discussion. The second thing is we need to have a conductor. And most of the time, that conductor is made of metal. So you could have a path of plastic. You can connect a plastic uh, string around connecting two ends of a battery. But nothing's going to happen because the electrons are not going to move easily through the plastic. Typically, metals will be the way we go because you have the C of electron model, and that is the valence electrons in a metal are very lo loosely held by the metal itself, and they're able, able to um, transfer quite easily. So the electrons will be able to move readily in a metal as opposed to an insulator. And that's why most wires have a metal on the inside, and then along the outside is usually an insulator. So this middle is a wire. And the outer part is usually a plastic or possibly 
um, a rubberized surface. So that's the circular um, wire itself. So you need a complete path, you need a conductor, and then finally the electrons need a reason to move. And I call that a push, and usually the push is going to be supplied by a potential difference. And that potential difference is supplied by a battery, a power supply, or most often in your house, an outlet. And the outlet can be 120 or 220 volts depending upon the uh, necessary voltage requirements of the, the object that's being plugged into the outlet. Most objects um, in your house will be 120 volts, things like lamps or the computers or um, televisions or things like that. But then the bigger um, objects, like uh, perhaps an electric stove or maybe even an electric dryer, possibly your furnace, um, might require 220 volts. So depending upon uh, the requirements of the voltage, the push that's needed to go through that device, um, it may require more or less. Now the television um, will require 120 volts, but then if you plug a computer in, um, what that's going to do is have a transformer in the computer and that's going to step down the voltage from 120 volts to a much lower voltage, um, typically in the 12 or 6 volt range depending upon what type of computer you have. Now laptops will typically be 6 volts and then um, desktop computers could be up to 12 volts. But there's a power supply in the computer and it takes the 120 volt wall voltage and steps it down using a transformer. But in order for current to exist, you need three things. You need a complete path, a conductor, typically metal, wires in this case, and a push. And the push is going to be caused by a battery or a power supply or a wall outlet.